Welcome again. Today we discuss the study of clades, or the science of cladistics. A clade is a group of organisms that have evolved from a common ancestor. And to study clades, we use cladograms. A cladogram is a tree-like diagram that includes an ancestor and all of its descendants. The traditional classification system created by Carl Linnaeus is based on form or morphology. But today, morphology remains an important source of data in constructing cladograms for fossil species. But with the advent of PCR and DNA sequencing techniques, DNA, RNA, and amino acid sequences of proteins are now very important tools in providing data in the field of molecular cladistics. This diagram provides a good example allowing us to compare traditional or Linnaean taxonomy with modern-day cladistics. Here we can see that the class Mammalia goes into one group and the class Reptilia includes turtles, lizards and snakes and crocodiles and a separate class, the Aves, includes the birds. Using cladistics, this traditional classification would be revised to place all of the groups with this one common amniotic egg ancestor, the amniota, and the mammalia branching off at this point with the sauropsida, including the turtles, the lizards and snakes, the crocodiles, and the birds. Interesting that at the end of this cladogram, we see that the crocodiles and the birds form the group Archosauria, which means that the traditional classification of the reptilia is described by modern-day cladistics as being a case of paraphyly, or a group that does not reflect the true evolutionary history of its members. It must be noted that in many cases, classification based on cladograms gives the same result as traditional classification. But in some cases like this, we have had to revise the classification system to reflect the true evolutionary relationship. I would like you to research and try to find another example of a paraphyletic group, and then also look up the meaning of the term polyphyletic, and try to find an example of a polyphyletic group. While modern-day cladistics depends heavily on molecular data, it's important to recognize that this molecular data is not foolproof and it does not come without its limitations. And the possibility does exist for organisms to have similar DNA sequences, similar amino acid sequences, and despite having these, not have a common ancestor. When such a case is identified, it's described as a molecular homoplasy. So molecular cladistics is based on the most likely outcome, or a principle of parsimony. Take for example this table here, which shows a human having a 30% difference in its base sequence compared to a mushroom and a 40% difference compared to a tulip. And the mushroom and the tulip also having a 40% difference. This data would most likely produce a cladogram like this, placing the human and the mushroom on a branch closer to each other and the tulip on a separate branch. When sequences are very large and complicated and several species are involved, this kind of data processing is not to be done by people and can only be taken on with the power of modern computers. And now that we have techniques like PCR and DNA sequencing and very powerful computers, we can now take on the task of classifying life based on molecular cladistics.